Okay, good afternoon, everyone. Um, I'm hoping to make this fairly short, so you have plenty of time. Um, what I want to talk today about is sort of the work that we've been doing in the communities. It links very well with the work that we were doing um, this morning. So basically, this is the International Federation of the Red Cross working with our national societies across Africa region. And what we've tried to do, because the Red Cross, that the main advantage of Red Cross Red Crescent is basically our permanence and our network of community volunteers and branches. And when we sort of put this together initially, we wanted to exploit that because obviously that's a comparative advantage. Um, so the idea was to do preparedness, to put things in place before the event because we already have our volunteers out there, we have our branches out there, we're ready to go. So the idea was to basically um, use community-based volunteers and pre-positioning so that we can respond uh, immediately to outbreaks and to aim to cover these three areas. Um, so first of all, oral rehydration, which I'll talk about obviously in this presentation. Uh, the second was WASH, basically moving to households, breaking transmission at household level. And the third to support OCV campaigns. When, when we uh, started out and we were thinking, OK, what do we want to concentrate on first? Um, we felt that oral rehydration is where we're going to save lives. We felt that was a priority. We want to save lives. And that was what we, that was the element that we developed first. And then the wash element and the OCV elements came later on. And what we did, we looked around to see if there are any models. And obviously, from what people were saying this morning, there are lots of models out there. The one we came across was the Blue Flag Volunteers in Sierra Leone. So I just want to briefly go through this. And then I'll talk more about uh, the Red Cross, Red Crescent setup. Okay, so this is basically, this was set up in Sierra Leone and, and the Blue Flag volunteers are trained to recognize and treat and advise on the prevention of diarrhea. So they're based in the communities. They have a, a flag. So it's a permanent place. It's not sort of peripatetic like... I think some of the examples that were given earlier were this is a fixed place in a community. So it's a go to point, basically, which we felt was a very powerful thing. And it, you know, this element of trust that we discussed, I, I, I felt that this sort of offers that it offers familiarity. So the idea was to provide ORS treatment and to give advice on sugar salt solutions where there is no ORS available. And obviously this was all done with the district health teams. Okay, so this was in place before the civil war, um, but during the conflict, um, the ORS was pushed heavily. And after the war, a lot of cholera outbreaks were managed using ORS and efforts were made to maintain the supply chains. So this, you know, a, a big part was played by the district health authorities to ensure that the supply chain was kept in place. And it's a concept that was supported, obviously, by the district health and by the government, but also by many organizations. So it was many organizations coming together to support it. So successes, and it's interesting, a few of the things we, again, we were talking about this morning sort of appear here. So this familiarity with ORS and sort of confidence in the product. I think uh, this was uh, one of the successes of the blue flag um and also sort of the the wide availability so the supply chains kept going and because it's available and um yeah so the the, the availability and then also the national 
sort of engagement. So it wasn't, you know, this was done at a, a national level. Okay, so some of the challenges and considerations. Um, so the need for retraining, and this is something because Red Cross we've come across, the need you've got to retrain the volunteers and you need this supervision element. Um, also the availability, ensuring the availability remains and the affordability. So you, you have to have a model around sort of, do they pay for it or is it free? How, or is it subsidized and how to work this ORS supply chain um, and the charges you're going to make. And then there was some challenges around ambiguous messaging. Are we promoting ORT or are we promoting sugar salt solution? So basically, we took the model of the blue flag and we basically moved it to our volunteers. So what you will typically have in a district is a branch in the district center and then community volunteers in the sort of satellite communities. And so what we wanted to do was make the branch where you might put an oral rehydration point kit. So you have that sort of scale up from the branch but then have your community volunteers working with their own community and sharing data with, with uh, the, the district health people, uh, but also sort of identifying surges in acute watery diarrhea. So in, in, in essence, they're an early warning system as well. But the idea is that they can identify levels of dehydration. So they're trained to do that. And they're also trained to give ORS and to refer. And because they're a permanent member of the community, what this means is, is that they can sort of work with the community. So we talked about referral transport, for example. If you have people that are permanent members of the community, they can work with the community to find a solution to this amongst, you know, amongst their neighbours. So basically, what was the idea here? So basically, our, our ORT volunteers are outside of cholera outbreaks. They're basically presenting idea, the idea to the communities. They're, you know, they're basically, it's, it's not just ORT. They're doing a lot of cholera awareness as well. So it's broader than this, but they're also there during non-outbreak times to actually give ORS. Yeah, so to deal with cases of diarrhea with ORS. During cholera outbreaks, they provide the early access and dehydration assessment. And then, um, and like I said before, they serve as this sort of monitoring early warning system. So if they see a peak in acute watery diarrhea, diarrhea cases they can alert the district health authorities and then the, the sort of continuous activity it's this constant promotion so what we touched on again this morning the reporting of diarrhea cases is, is a very sort of passive role if you like the idea is that they're there and they can people can go to them it's, it's not so active you know they're not going out to other uh, communities okay so finally just making it work i won't pretend that we have this uh, all sussed out we're still working very hard to sort of scale this up um obviously very important that we fit in with the government systems that are already there this is sort of number one. We always work with the district health authorities. So we need to be clear on the level of service expected of the volunteers. So typically a Red Cross, Red Crescent volunteer offers three hours of voluntary service a week. And then sort of you, you need to look at, okay, if, 
if it's a case of a proper outbreak, then they become, you know, they go on per diem. And so what one of the problems we sometimes have is sort of the government will have one sort of system with its volunteers, we'll have another. So there's a real need for alignment between sort of us and the government. Um, the formula, formalization of the responsibilities, basically they need to know exactly what they can and can't do. And, you know, their empowerment, giving them the training, giving them the T-shirt, giving them that responsibility and recognition is very important. They need that confidence, but also the retraining element, sort of not just training them once, but one of the things we're looking to do is put training online. So it was interesting to hear what David was saying that he might move into ORP with the online training. Um, and then yeah and and recogn being recognized as an early warning system okay so what we're trying to do mo uh, at the moment is to take the whole thing to scale and uh yeah maybe in a couple of years i'll come back and let you know how it's going <laughs> okay thank you